come, O Lord our God. celebrating the mystery and the joy that is Easter. I welcome you here. I thought we were going to have snow. I don't. I didn't get to watch the news last night. The storm went somewhere, uh, but I heard it's coming tomorrow, and uh, the clergy conference is uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. We're right down on Long Island Sound. You look out your windows, the beach is there, the water is there, and it's supposed to be like zero degrees and wind and everything else, so uh, we're not going to be out by the beach too much. But that is the same spot that they're having that adult diocesan retreat in June. I forgot the actual date, um, but you can sign up for that if you'd like. And I think the cutoff date is May 1st or something for the registration. Uh, but it's an absolutely beautiful site. And if you are kind of, you know, just wavering about thinking of going or not. And uh, so in this still, in this beautiful sanctuary filled with the lilies, I don't know how much longer they'll be with us, but I love the way the active church looks at this time of the year. So as we gather in this joyful celebration of Jesus' and the promise of our resurrection, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. I confess to so Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my wrongdoings, and am heart and sorrow that I have offended you. Most merciful Father, have mercy on me, forgive me, and pardon me my sin. I resolve to defend my life, improve and sanctify, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I beseech you to bless Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and by his authority rested in me, I absolve you from your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, alleluia. And your salvation, alleluia. O Lord, hear our prayer. And you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take away from us our iniquities, we beseech you, O Lord, that pure heart may enter into the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Alleluia. Because of his Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God, we receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you have given us the gift of eternal life. Grant that as Jesus fed his disciples, that we may bring the nourishment of his teaching to all of those who hunger for his truth. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The lesson for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And when they had brought them in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the other disciples said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. And the God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had killed him by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, that is God has given to those who obey him. And after recalling the apostles, they said to them uh, to stop preaching in his name, and they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and they dismissed them. And so they left, in the, pre they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing, that they had been found worthy to dis, um, suffer dishonor for the sake of Jesus' name. Here ends the lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's holy mass. Thank you. The names of the Lord are not exhausted, his mercies are not spent, they are renewed each morning, so great is his faithfulness. Alleluia. My portion is the Lord, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. Alleluia. 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 To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, and power, and authority from ages past, now, and for ages to come. Amen. 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 Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. And after this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan, Galilee, Zebedee's son, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We also will come along with you. So they went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything? And they answered him, No. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat, you will find something. And so they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the great number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, 
dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized that it was the Lord. And Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. By the words of this holy gospel, may our sins be forgiven. of Jesus. The whole time you and Jesus is walking around preaching, even performing miracles, everyone wants to know if he's really God. Then he comes back from the dead as the glorified Savior, all kinds of God stuff looking, and now everybody wants to know, is he human? And that's why we have the story of Jesus eating a hearty breakfast of grilled fish. You know, it doesn't sound all that exciting. It's almost anticlimactic at this point. But you know, ghosts don't eat fish. Real people do. And in just in case those were some kind of apparitions of fish and bread on the charcoal fire, Jesus tells the disciples to bring some over from the catch that they had just dragged to shore. There can be no doubt that these are real fish being eaten by a real Jesus. And as the Bible tells us this morning, this was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. And again, it's almost anticlimactic. He's having breakfast on the shore, and that's supposed to be our third and our final proof that Jesus resurrected. I think by this time it's also fair to ask, what's the problem with them disciples? Mary Magdalene told them about the empty tomb. Peter and the beloved disciples, they went and they saw it for themselves. Then Mary actually witnessed the resurrected Jesus, which she then goes and tells the disciples about, and that was last Sunday's Gospel. And then after that, that Sunday night, Jesus appears to all of them except Thomas, who's out somewhere else. And then the following Sunday, everyone is together, and Jesus appears to them, telling Doubting Thomas to take his fingers and put them in the nail prints in Jesus' hands, and to take Thomas' hand and put it right into the side where the centurion had put the spear while Jesus was on the cross. Do whatever you need to believe, Jesus is saying. So it seems reasonable to wonder by this the third time. Why are there so many reservations in those disciples that just hold them back from believing? We're all here today as Easter believers, and I don't think any of us have even seen the risen Lord once. So what more did these guys want? And that should get us to think, because the disciples are not fools and they're not non-believers. And so when we have those questions rolling around in our head, maybe that should start us to ponder and think what's really going on. And I once saw on some web page a picture of a church sign outside of some fundamentalist church that read, a free thinker is Satan's slave. Now inside that kind of a church, 
You're not supposed to ask questions. You're not really supposed to think too much. You just read the Bible and everything is there laid out for you just as it has been since day one. Now, if you dare to think a little bit for yourself when it comes to God, then you become God's enemy. Then you become Satan's slave. I couldn't disagree more. This church, our National Catholic Church, which we're going to talk about on Saturday when we talk about Coder and his 150th birthday, this church could not disagree more because we've always honored the idea of thinking and faith. I believe that thinking is the greatest gift that God has given to any of us, and I think that it helps define us as created in God's image. Thinking, therefore, becomes part of our worship. It's a gift we give back to God. Why would you turn this off and just turn into a robot if God gave us the gift of a mind? So this is just one of the reasons why I'm not at all impressed with the state of Tennessee and their recent decision to name the Bible the official book of that state. That political sideshow now casts the Bible, the Holy Bible, as the official book of Tennessee, and now it's going to be listed along with milk as the official drink of Tennessee, excuse me, listed along with raccoons as the official animal of Tennessee, <laughs> along with tomatoes as the official fruit of Tennessee, and then our Holy Bible is going to be listed right next to something called an M82 sniper rifle, which is the official rifle of the state of Tennessee. Thinking about the Bible seems a far greater way to honor the Bible than to create all of these sideshows about the Bible. And if we honor the biblical word with our God-given intelligence, I think our suspicions that something is awry are justified when we hear that the disciples are again surprised by Jesus' reappearance after his death. They should be much more willing to believe by this the third time. Remember, Jesus says to that one guy, put your fingers in my wounds, put your hand in my side if you need to really believe. And now you got him eating fish on the shore, and that's supposed to be the third and final uh, proof. I can understand the doubting Thomas story. He wasn't there when Jesus appeared to the other ten disciples, and he refuses to believe without being able to see for himself. Now that's got an awful lot of implication for the rest of church history. And this gives Jesus a chance to tell him, to actually tell every one of us sitting here, and to all of those other Christians that aren't here anymore on a Sunday morning, he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. So with that statement, Easter becomes timeless. It reaches out from the empty grave. It reaches through all of those first-generation eyewitnesses. It reaches to each and every one of us sitting here in church this morning who have not seen and yet have believed. Whether we be half a world away from Jerusalem, whether it be 2,000 years, or whether it be 4,000 years from down the road, blessed are those who do not see, yet believe. And then that makes sense. At that point, if you go home and open up your Bible, go to the end of John chapter 20, John, at that very appropriate place, closes his gospel. And then, before you decide to close the book, if you turn the page, you're surprised that there's another chapter hiding there. And one of those stories in that unexpected chapter, after you thought the gospel was all done, is the one that we read about this morning of Jesus cooking fish on the seashore. But if we're willing to combine Bible and a little bit of thinking, at this point, maybe we can see that someone has come along and added a second ending to the original Gospel of John. Maybe we have here a resurrection account that was told amongst the earliest believers of the church, but it had no home in any of the written Gospels. So people were sharing this verbally, but no one had ever taken the time to write it down and put it into something brand new called a Gospel. So John is the latest of the four Gospels in our Bible. And maybe a good intention and pious believer from one of John's churches tacked this story onto the end of John's Gospel to make sure that it survived and was retold for all future generations of believers so that we could hear it here in some April day in 2016. Maybe this good intentioned Christian was actually thinking. And now that begins to make a lot more sense. Then this doesn't become a third appearance met with a good, again, with shock. Instead, maybe this is the very first appearance of Jesus to the apostles. One of the earliest Easter traditions is the empty tomb that when the angels appear, or angels appear to the women, they tell them, 
Jesus is going before you to Galilee. In today's account, it takes place on the shores of Lake Tiberias, <coughs> and that's simply another name for the Sea of Galilee. And I don't have the other time to go into it now, but there are only seven of the remaining 11 disciples accounted for in the story. The most primitive Easter account may have had the disciples dispersing after he rescued Jesus. Jesus is going through all of this. Jesus is going to resurrect from the tomb. And remember, the women go there, but maybe the disciples were so afraid that they were going to be the next ones to have to go to the cross that they got the heck out of town. They went back to their old town. They went back to their old job. They gave up hope. And so what they did, they went back to their old lives, some as fishermen up in Galilee. That is, until the resurrected Jesus confronts them with his new life and with theirs. And what we have here may be one of the oldest, most primitive Easter stories in the church. Then the astonishment of the disciples is understandable as is also the need for Jesus to prove that it's really him bodily resurrected from the grave. Thinking in this way saves the biblical story from confusion and the disciples from undue embarrassment, and thinking makes this a meaningful account of an unexpected encounter with Christ, even for people who had given up on Jesus, even for people who were not expecting ever to imagine Easter. Jesus came to them too. Thinking is a gift from God, and it should accompany every faith act that we do. Every time that we worship, we should use thinking as well, especially when it comes to something as wondrous as Easter. So may this be our prayer as we continue to celebrate the great unknown that is Jesus' presence amongst us still because of the resurrection. And in his name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar on this still Easter Sunday morning, we offer our prayers for Louise Pahalski and for a speedy recover, a recovery after her fall. And this is offered by Linda Pahalski. We offer our prayers for the safe travel uh, for 16 members of the sophomore class of Frontier Regional High School, including Tristan Orlowski, who are presently on a class trip to the Netherlands is offered by Bev Orlowski. We offer our prayers in memory of Joseph Majewski on the 10th anniversary of his passing on April 9th, 2006. It's offered by Alice Majewski and his children and grandchildren. We offer our prayers at this time for Eleanor Ferris, who is at Cooley Dickinson battling pneumonia. And also we offer our prayers at this time for John Kramoski, who will be operated on uh, this coming Thursday, also at Cooley Dickinson. These prayers are being offered by Susan and Jason. We offer our prayers also still at this time for those battling cancer. Doug Robinson by daughter Jenny Whitman and Karen Herzig. Tom Nidal by Teresa Belisle. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky. Marie Loven and Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Kostrup. Randy Clemens by her grandmother Dottie Baronis. Also, fathers Ray Freda, Jan Bielczek, and Maurice Lazell is offered by myself. Also, Benjamin St. George is offered by Teresa Masek. And Frank Skrosky, diagnosed with a neurological disease, is offered by his twin brother Don, the Skrosky, Gates, and Kirkendall family. Are there any intentions at all from the congregation? For all of these prayers, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you now at this time, and also for all of those of our parish who are unable to be with us here today, and those of our parish who have chosen not to be with us here today, for all of these things, Lord, we pray to you by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
eternal rest grant unto them, O oh Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son. He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, happy, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands, calling out your name. My soul shall savor the rich banquet of praise. With joyous lips, my mouth shall honor you. Hallelujah. <laughs> We receive from your most sacred hands, our most gracious Father, the sacramental bread, with the same faith and trust with the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior. We said to them, I am the living bread of the kingdom of the Where we eat this bread, we live forever. The bread that appears in the life of the Lord.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive his sacrifice and Amen. In confidence, we come before you now, Almighty God, and present you with our earthly gifts. Open the doors of very heaven for us, and send down from and send down the bread of life that we may be fed. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Throughout all ages of ages. Unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true man. <laughs> took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us. And by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide throughout the world together with her priests and all true believers in the holy faith. Remember, O oh Lord, your servants and your handmaids. And of all present in this congregation, imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule in fatherly love, wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of them, to begin with the most blessed Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, Likewise, as apostles, with all the innumerable hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood, just as they believe, professed, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a long for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with it a hungry multitude of people, and afterwards foretold the giving of it to his disciples and friends as more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And afterwards, from the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those who had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Those who love me will keep my word. And my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. 
that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hand, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. Like manner after supper, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hand, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of this, for this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which for you and for many shall be shed for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Michael, Lord, we, your servants, is also your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, is also his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly beseech you, Almighty God, command that our prayers be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar before the countenance of your divine majesty. That as many of us as receive this altar the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, Lord, of your servants and handmaidens, all who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, O Lord, is also to those who have died in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully sure in their sufferings, we beseech you in the name of Christ our Lord and your beloved Son. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name's sake, whose hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and whose lives patterned after the divine Master, merit an eternal bliss. Number us, O Lord, in their company, with confidence we ask you, not because of our merits, but that you bestow forgiveness through Christ our Lord. By whom, O Lord, these gifts you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and bestow upon us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, and to you, God, the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory. Throughout all ages of ages, let us pray, admonished by salutary precepts and following divine institution, we may hold to say.
Eucharist, we beseech you, Lord, from all of past, present, and future. And when you deem it necessary to test us, grant us the same serenity of spirit which you bestowed on the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles, martyrs, and all of those who resolutely marched under the banner of our Savior, that being supported by your help, they always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Throughout all ages of ages, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the union of your divine spirit with humanity in Jesus Christ be to our sanctification and life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant your peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, has by your death revived the world, deliver me by this your most uh, sacred body and blood from all my iniquities and from every evil, and grant that I may always fulfill your holy will, who lives and reigns for all ages. Amen. Partaking of your body, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, all unworthy, dare to receive, may not serve as a judgment, but through your mercy may become a defense of my soul and body and a desired remedy. May the sacramental union with you, Jesus Christ, my Master and Savior, awaken in me living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May it make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth, and may it at last unite me entirely with you, O Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I pray till I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy, you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The peace of the blessing. 
God of the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, and the Spirit, and the Lord. Peace and blessings to God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, and the Spirit, and the Lord. Peace and blessings to God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, and the Spirit, and the Lord. Body, so let it pray. Body, so let it pray. Peace and blessings to God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, and the Spirit, and the Lord. Peace and blessings to God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, and the Spirit, and the Lord.
And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have gathered to yourself a people to praise you. Filled now with your heavenly food, may we bless you and give you thanks always and everywhere. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices offered, Alleluia, Alleluia. of our worship be pleasing to you, O Holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable unto you, and through your mercy be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being to Him was light, and the light was the light of all people, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through Him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which lightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and of truth. Amen. Amen. Amen.